Hi folks, Dan and Leslie here from Addicted to the Mouse. Welcome to How to Play on Disney Magic Kingdom Park. How's it going? Going good. Yeah, this is a new series that we are going to start. We're trying something a little bit new um, where we will have this on podcast as well as on YouTube. Yep. All right, so Walt Disney World is huge. At 40 square miles, the Walt Disney World Resort is about the same size as the city of San Francisco. Holy smokes. At the time of this recording, there are four theme parks, two water parks, 30 Disney Resort hotels, myriad non-Disney Resort hotels, and that's just on and around the Disney property, a huge shopping district called Disney Springs, and over 400 restaurants from walk-up to triple-A five diamond luxury dining experiences. It is somewhat overwhelming. So <laughs> yeah. planning Disney can be very overwhelming. So it is pretty common knowledge that Magic Kingdom opened its doors on October 1st, 1971. It was the first of the four theme parks and it opened with Disney's Contemporary Resort and Disney's Polynesian Resort. What most people don't realize, however, is that Magic Kingdom Park is on two stories. I know. And right? we got to actually experience this, so it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So the first story, what everybody sees, is actually the second story. Mm -hmm. And then underground on the first story. So because of the way you have to build in Florida, the Florida Swampland, they could not bury a basement. So they had to build these tunnels on top of the ground. Um, and then they dug out Bay Lake. It's actually a man-made lake, and they filled in all around these these tunnels, and now they're called the Utilidors, which, which is the actual first floor for Magic Kingdom Park, and then everybody enters on the second floor. Right, and it's so subtle. It's the, whenever you're walking into the park, the incline is so subtle that you don't even really realize that you're going up to a second level. I know, it's pretty cool. That is cool. Okay, so let's dig in a little bit and go into the Magic Kingdom. So Magic Kingdom is comprised of six basic lands. What are they? All right, so as you first come into the park, you're going to enter into Town Square area, mm -hmm. and then you're going to walk down Main Street, USA, that has shops on either side as you walk down the street. Um, it's kind of an iconic little road that's supposed to remind you of a little small town Main Street. Yep. So then you enter the hub. This is the hub. This is right in front of Cinderella Castle. Mm -hmm. And you can go down different spokes of this hub depending on where you're wanting to get to. So if you, let's just start to the immediate left. If you go down that spoke, you will enter into Adventureland, which has uh, like Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, one then, of our good favorite reds. Yes, and then you kind of wrap around Adventureland and enter into Frontierland. Mm -hmm. And that has one of our absolute favorite rides. Splash Mountain. Yes, sir. And then um, if you come out of Adventureland and retrace your steps yep, down this, kind of walk in front of Adventureland area, you enter into Liberty Square, which is home of Haunted Mansion. Yes, got to love Haunted Mansion. We do love Haunted Mansion. And if you wrap around to the back side of Cinderella Castle, this whole area is fantasy land to include the whole new fantasy land area as well, uh, which was added on uh, several years ago. Hmm. And then if you continue on, you enter into another large area of the park of Magic Kingdom that is called Tomorrowland. And this is hmm. where Space Mountain resides. The iconic Space Mountain. Yes. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, why don't you run us through our agenda for this particular video? All right. So we are going to give you a, a quick overview of how to plan your day, talk about dining, attractions, and how to fast pass in Magic Kingdom, entertainment, characters, shops, and then just everything else that Magic Kingdom has to offer, as well as some really awesome tips along the way. Okay. So our philosophy when we are... Um, tackling Magic Kingdom and um, the first thing you got to do is figure out how many days that you're going to spend in the park because really this is the most cram-packed theme park at Walt Disney World Resort. Yes. So as you look at the map, um, it, it is possible to do Magic Kingdom Park in one day. However, if you have to, that is the more the better. And 
what's even better about that is that if you have if you're staying for multiple days at Walt Disney World Resort and you have two days at Magic King Kingdom you can book in your trip so you you start your day with the magic you end your you start your week with the magic and you end your week with the magic which Absolutely. is fun. Absolutely. So um, if you have two days then the probably best thing to do is to split the park in half. That's not saying you can't hit other parks uh, or other parts of the park, but if you split the park in half, and so as you come down Main Street, uh, basically you're going to take Liberty Square, Frontierland, and Adventureland and pretty much do all of that in one day, and then you're going to do Fantasyland and Tomorrowland in another day. Yeah. Uh, Fantasyland is the biggest land. Again, they added on to it recently. The most uh, recent addition is uh, the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, which is uh, the hardest to get fast pass, but we'll get to that here in a minute. Absolutely. All right, so when is the best time to arrive at Magic Kingdom? So the best time to arrive at Magic Kingdom is going to be dependent upon your plans. However, the least crowded time is what we call rope drop. Rope drop is nothing more than when the park opens. Um, they used to have a, a an opening show at the uh, in front of the uh, train station there at the entrance of the park, but due to some sort of overcrowding issues, um, occupancy issues, they had to open up. Uh, Town Square, Main Street, just to get everybody out from this area. So now the, there's still an opening show, but it's at the stage uh, at Cinderella Castle. So if you're going to rope drop, you actually get to enter the park before everyone else, before the park opens, come down Main Street, you can get yourself a coffee at the Starbucks, which is right here. Um, come all the way down and watch that show here. And then when you rope drop, you can take any one of these spokes going into the other lands and pick uh, where you want to start your day off. Well, if you're one of the first ones in the park, um, there are going to be a few of your friends and closest <laughs> family next to you. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of people there. But um, you will be able to get first in in line for just about any ride. I can promise you that a lot of people are going to hit the spoke that heads immediately down towards Fantasyland and dumps people out right there next to uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So uh, depending on what you want to do, if you want to follow the crowd and you want and you don't have a fast pass for that, maybe that's your best option. Or uh, like what we like to do is uh, run over to Space Mountain and you take the little one to um, Tomorrowland Speedway and then I take Aiden to Ride Space Mountain. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Another great tip on a when to arrive is if you make a breakfast reservation at Be Our Guest for prior to the park opening, then you can actually get in back there and have some breakfast. And then by the time you're done with breakfast, you're coming out about the time the park opens and it might give you a little bit of an advantage on some of those rides. Absolutely. So extra magic hours is another thing to consider. And I'll say, um, so extra magic hours are for everyone who is staying on resort property. There is a park every single day that will provide either extra magic hours in the morning or the evening. And this is just time when only resort guests can participate in the park activities. Most of the time when there's extra magic hours, while it's a, a really great perk, um, that park tends to be the busiest out of all the four parks for that day. Because a lot of people, that's how they plan their trip, is they pick the park that has the extra magic hours and that's the one they go to. So you might keep that in mind if the extra magic hours are not that important to you, then you could go to a different park and maybe it won't be quite as busy as the park that has the the extra magic hours. Okay, we'll get into figuring out how to get extra magic hours in a later video. All right. Okay, so as you are walking down Main Street, you got a good tip on how to avoid the crowds. So when you come down Main Street, I don't know if it's because in the United States we drive on the right side of the road, but um, Main Street itself is pretty crowded. There are a lot of PhotoPass photographers, so that is a great point. There will be PhotoPass photographers all through Main Street pointing their cameras at Cinderella Castle. Um, there will also be uh, trolleys going, tr not trolleys, what is the name of the thing? Is it a trolley? Yeah, it's a trolley. So there, are all, there will also be trolleys uh, going down Main Street and um, uh, performances going on down Main Street. Oftentimes when you're walking down Main Street, there might be a parade. Anyway, the street itself is busy. Yes. So it is beneficial to walk on the sidewalk. Um, actually, it's even more beneficial to walk through the stores because most of these stores are connected and you can start at one end and walk all the way down. 
Well, again, I don't know if it is uh, because we drive on the right side in the United States or what, but most people, when they're going into the park, tend to head on the right side of the street into the park. And then most people, when they're leaving, tend to head on their right side as they're leaving. Try to switch that up. Try to flip that around, and as you're going into the park, uh, head up the left side of the street. And as you're coming out of the park, again, head down the left, the left side of the street. And you're going to... Um, maybe it's not going to be as crowded because most people are coming in the middle in the, in the early on in the day. Okay, so another tip as we zoom into Main Street is the Emporium is the first thing that you come to. Well, the Emporium is connected through all of these stores, and you can go, you can walk inside the Emporium at that bottom of the line, and then go all the way through these stores and come out right next to Casey's Corner, which is a hot dog quick service restaurant. You can't quite do that. Um, on the east side of the street because you've got uh, Center Street East um, right here. but you, So you can go through all these stores and you can uh, cross Center Street East, um, walk through the Main Street Bakery and, and come out next to the ice cream parlor up here. I think often though, isn't the Main Street Bakery, um, don't they usually have a rope blocking That's that true. one That's true. There is a, a um, it is blocked sometimes there. So I would suggest the Emporium as you enter in the park, come in the Emporium door and then walk all the way through these shops and then exit out over here. And that's probably the quickest way to get down Main Street. Absolutely. All right. So plan your day in blocks, not down to the minute. I can guarantee that you are going to have a much better vacation if you let some of those spontaneous magic moments happen that happen whenever you're in these parks and especially Magic Kingdom. I have so many memories of things that I couldn't plan again if I wanted to with our kids, but it's just because we kind of embraced the moment and let things happen and, and planned our day more in blocks as opposed to down to the minute. So Absolutely. So my blocks, we kind of look at your morning block is going to consist of breakfast and then we have morning time and then we roll into lunch or snacks and then an afternoon block with like possibly a break was what we usually like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually try with Magic Kingdom getting there first thing at rope drop, riding some stuff enjoying some food and then leaving for part of the afternoon to go somewhere just to get away from the crowds for a little while. And then we come back, have dinner, and have our evening block, which will always consist of happily ever after fireworks. Yes, it's a good one. <laughs> All right, so let's move into dining. All right, so there are actually 31 restaurants I know. It's in crazy. Magic Kingdom. And that is not even to mention the surrounding resorts, which we will get to in another podcast. I know. because 31 yeah. restaurants. Because <laughs> really the surrounding resorts offer a whole lot more. And with the convenience of the monorail, you really have a ton of restaurants at your disposal whenever you're in Magic Kingdom. Absolutely. You can... Um, in order, in an effort to save money, you can bring in your own food. Uh, we have seen people do that where they pack a lunch. Um, you can't, you're not allowed to bring in any glass bottles or alcohol. Right. Um, and you can't have any foods that require heating, but everything else you're allowed to bring in. And so, um, you're not, you can't bring in a rolling cooler, but you can bring in a small cooler, um, say that could fit like underneath a, uh, stroller basket or something like that. Yes. All right. So first, you'd want to plan your table service meals first. So anyone are, is allowed to book table service meals um, 180 days out. And then you um, also have your snacks and your quick service and then your table service as well, like, like I said. So we're going to first start with table service. So there are eight table service locations. The first one you come to when you enter the park is Tony's Town Square Restaurant. Mm-hmm. This is um, not the best choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we've eaten here once, and um, I I've also not heard great things about it. So uh, I would say it might be one of those places that you end up at because you didn't make reservations. Yeah, this would not <laughs> be my first choice to make reservations. You can do this Festival of Fantasy Parade dining package, but it's just not worth it. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I mean, not worth. It's not it. worth it to us. So no, you don't yeah. need it. 
Okay, then as you move up further down Main Street, you come to the Plaza Restaurant. Now, mm -hmm. the Plaza Restaurant, we actually haven't eaten at, but I have heard excellent things about it. So I think that this is a very good choice as far as dining options go. Absolutely. And then as you round around um, the uh, hub in front of Cinder Cinderella's Castle, you come to Crystal Palace. Now this is one of the uh, character dining experiences in Magic Kingdom. This one will um, feature characters with Winnie the Pooh, typically are the characters. Now, as we come into Adventureland, we come across Skipper Canteen, it's technically called Jungle Navigation Company, Skipper Canteen. Um, this one we have also not eaten at, but it has some very unusual choices. It does. So um, I've heard good things about it. It's definitely, I think, worth a try. Um, and then as we move around the corner, the Diamond Horseshoe mm -hmm. is in Liberty Square. We also have not eaten at this one. <laughs> we kind of tend to find our favorites. It's really hard to get around that. Um, and then we have eaten at what's next door to the Diamond Horseshoe, which is the Liberty Tree Tavern. This was phenomenal. We actually ate here on Thanksgiving with um, our whole family, and it was perfect for a Thanksgiving meal. They had um, kind of a family style uh, meal where they would bring you turkey and um, oh, mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans and macaroni and cheese and um, I'm trying to remember the other meat options, but, and then a fabulous dessert. So it was really, really excellent. And then we move into the other character dining experience in Magic Kingdom, which is Cinderella's Royal Table. In Cinderella Castle. Yes. And so this one is uh, with the princesses. Uh, the princesses can change, uh, but it tends to be the kind of iconic Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, um, uh, Snow White, those are the, the main princesses that tend to be there. And it's kind of fun because it is in Cinderella's castle. So it is something to mention is that it is a signature restaurant. So if you are on the dining plan, it does take it's a little, two... It's a little expensive. Yeah, two table service credits. And if you're not on the dining plan, this is one restaurant that you have to pay up front whenever you make the reservation um, yep. for the fee for your entire family. This so. one is one that you want to book 180 days out. Absolutely. And then finally, um, so Be Our Guest Restaurant is a uh, quick service for breakfast and lunch, but it is the one quick service location on uh, property that will take reservations for their quick service times. And then now Be Our Guest is, um, it's it's a, actually a two table service uh, fixed meal at dinner mm -hmm. um, that gives you a French experience. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. <laughs> all right, so for quick service or counter service are all of the other 23 restaurants. So we're going to move through. <laughs> we're going to talk to these a little quicker. Yes. Um, so on Main Street, you have your Main Street Bakery, and this is also where the Starbucks is located. Mm -hmm. You have Plaza Ice Cream and Casey's Corner. So those are all really close to one another. Mm -hmm. And then if you move into Adventureland, we have the Sunshine Tree Terrace. Yeah, this and is where you get the uh, citrus swirl. Yes, mm, oh, that is delicious. And then, Not as good as the next one, which the, is the um, Dole Alo Whip. Yes, at Aloha Isle. Right. And then Tortuga Tavern, which is where you can get a turkey leg turkey if you legs. so desire. And then we have the Golden Oak Outpost is a cart. Yeah, it's um, a small cart. It's in Adventureland, so usually mm -hmm. like uh, pretzels, ice cream, that kind of thing. Uh, Pecos Bills, which is delicious and probably one of the best quick service locations for your money. Um, you yep. get a lot of food for what you pay for. It's uh, it's kind of Tex-Mex. It's got you can get like fajitas, tacos, nachos, and they've got a fixins bar, which is really really good. Yeah, and then Westward Ho is another cart that is available in Adventureland area, and then in Liberty Square, I would say. I would say that's like Frontierland slash Adventureland. But. And then in Liberty Square, there is Sleepy Hollow, which is where you get the waffle yes. sandwich. You can get a chicken waffle sandwich, which is okay. Uh -huh. uh, it's not bad. Uh, but the uh, Nutella waffle sandwich with, fruit. with fresh fruit is oh, to die for. It, to it, it is die good. for. 
It's a um, great breakfast too. It really is. And then Liberty Square Market has a lot of fresh fruit options. Um, I'm not really sure what else they offer up there. And then Columbia Harbor House is a delicious option for quick service. Yes. Um, we've gotten the lobster roll. We've gotten the seafood mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. Very, very tasty. Yep. Um, so I think our favorites are probably Columbia Harbor House, Pecos Bill, and then um, haven't gotten to it yet, but be our guest for lunch. Yes. So in Fantasyland, Pinocchio Village House. Um, this overlooks It's a Small World, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, the Friar's Nook. And then Storybook Treats, which Storybook Treats is where you can get your ice, ice cream right. delights. Mm -hmm. Um, be our guest for lunch or breakfast. Um, we really have found good value in be our guest as for lunch. We really enjoy that yes. a lot. And if you're vegetarian, they have a lot of really excellent vegetarian options. Mm -hmm. Um, Gaston's Tavern is where we love Some to get giant cinnamon rolls, the giant cinnamon rolls. Mm -hmm. And you can ask for extra frosting. <laughs> <laughs> And then you've got to get a LeFou's brew while you're there. Yeah. Um, and then Prince Eric's Village Market. Um, this also has fruit options. Cheshire Cafe is also in Fantasyland area. Mm -hmm. And then we finish out Fantasyland with Cosmic Rays Starlight Cafe, which kind of is right on the edge of Fantasyland slash Tomorrowland. It might actually technically fall in Tomorrowland. Yeah, it's, uh, it's your more traditional, um, what you would think of as park fair. Yeah, yeah. It's burgers and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then in Tomorrowland, we have Anti-Gravity's Galactic mm. Goodies. And this is ice cream, ice cream options. Really good. We've we've had this ice cream several times. Um, in the Cool Ship. Um, and then finally, the Lunching Pad. So that is underneath Astro Orbiter. And uh, they've got a lot of like uh, pretzels and that, that kind of thing. Yeah, they have um, kind of some different options for pretzels, which are really good. Yep. Before we move on to our next agenda item, we wanted to talk about uh, using a travel agent during your next vacation planning. So I am a travel agent with Fairytale Journeys. I specialize in Disney vacations and whether you use me or somebody else, I can highly recommend anyone from my agency for sure. Um, and this is a completely free option to you as a consumer. The price that you'll pay is the same that you will pay if you book and plan your trip on your own. But special services that you get are dining recommendations. Uh, the agents will get up on the morning that your dining is available to book and at the crack of dawn and book those dining reservations. They will give fast pass recommendations and book those for crack of dawn whenever that 60 days out comes or 30 days if you're off site. And all along the way, give advice, tips, itinerary planning, and try to make this the most magical vacation possible for you and your family. I mean, you didn't even, I, I think the most valuable thing is you continually look for better deals. So Disney continually yeah. releasing, continually releases promotions um, as the year goes by and as vacations get closer and closer and closer, like free dining is a perfect example. And I know a, a ton of vacations where you've actually reached back out to um, your clients who didn't even know a promotion was released when it got released. And you say, hey, I can save you money if you just switch this one little thing. And they're like, sure, heck yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a really um, valuable service to use a travel agent. Uh, you can find any of our agents at uh, www.fairytaljourneys.com or um, specifically, all of us are on Facebook. Um, Fairytale Journeys by Leslie Lowry is my Facebook page. Uh, there's a ton of us. I think we are... Uh, we're above 200 in the agents at this wow. point. So um, we have a lot of resources and we use each other as a resource as well, which is um, really invaluable. So not only if you use one of us, are you getting our expertise, but you're getting all 200 people's expertise because we reach out to each other. So it's really awesome. All right. So now we're going to move into talking about attractions. So yes. Magic Kingdom actually has 42 attractions. So this is rides and um, activity type things. Um, so we're going to highlight our favorites for each land for now, and then we'll go more in depth for future um, podcasts and videos. So down Main Street, a couple of our favorites here are um, the railroad, of course. Of course. Um, so the railroad makes three stops around 
uh, Magic Kingdom. So you could do a full trip around the entire park and just not get off. Or you could um, take it as kind of like a quick pass to uh, uh, one of the other locations. So it is in Main Street, Fantasyland, and Frontierland are the three uh train stops. And then the other attraction in Main Street area that we like to do is Sorcerers of Magic Kingdom. And so we haven't, um, we didn't do this for the first several trips. It wasn't until we kind of had been several times and felt like we had a little bit more time to be able to enjoy this type of activity. Um, but this is an interactive activity throughout the park where you get cards and you go around and you defeat different villains. Um, really kind of fun and interactive. Um, if you have, if you want something different to do while you're in Magic Kingdom, it's really fun. All right, so then we move into Adventureland. In Adventureland, our two favorite attractions here are Pirates of the Caribbean that we men mentioned earlier and the Jungle Cruise. All right, so you move through Adventureland, which is a very winding, twisting path. Uh, they did that on purpose. You've got the Jungle Cruise right um, off to the left, right uh, right there on the river. Mm -hmm. um, going through Adventureland, you've got Pirates of the Caribbean just past it on the left. So coming out of Adventureland, you take that right and you head right over into uh, Frontierland for our favorite ride, one of our favorite rides, Splash right? Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. So um, it is your, it's not a traditional really log ride. It is, um, What? how do you describe that? I describe it as uh, like a log or a flume ride. Um, so you have your <laughs> four. So <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening on the podcast, Dan just put in a, um, picture from one of our trips and Jennings looks terrified. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have uh, four rows and you can fit two to three people across on these rows. Um, and you go through the story of Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, and uh, Br'er Bear. And it's just really fun. And it's got a huge drop at the end. Yep. Which is when that picture is taken. <laughs> <laughs> um and then Big Thunder Mountain is the other big attraction that we like in uh, Frontierland. Yep. And then we move into Liberty Square. All right, so in Liberty Square, uh, two of our favorite attractions here are uh, the Haunted Mansion. Yep, and it is kind of right there on the water. Um, it's hard to miss. Yep. And then um, also the Hall of Presidents, which, you know, surprisingly, I didn't think I was going to enjoy this one, but I really, really do. All right. So then as we move into Fantasyland, right there on the right, whenever you come in to Fantasyland is Peter Pan's Flight. And this is one that we we always do with our family. Um, it's, it's really fun. Um, no height restrictions. So it's an, a nice, easy ride that everyone can do. I would like to mention a couple others, and they're both kind of in the new Fantasyland area, one of which is Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. That is a roller coaster, and you're in mine carts, and so the mine carts are kind of free swinging, which makes it, um, has a little added fun. And then right across from there, you can see Enchanted Tales with Belle. Now, this I'd like to mention as um, an attraction that I really think is like a must do for everyone. It's a really cool character experience, especially if anyone in your party likes Belle um, and Beauty and the Beast, because you get to actually go in through Maurice's um, house and or cottage, and you are transported into the Beast Castle where you get to meet Belle and Lumiere and her tell the story with the help of the audience. And so um, in the picture that Dan is showing here, is our oldest was picked as the Beast. Okay, so moving from Fantasyland, you go into Tomorrowland. It is the last land that you come to. Mm-hmm. And one of our favorite must-dos here is Walt's Carousel of Progress. Mm -hmm. And he developed this for the New York World's Fair. And it's just iconic and historical, and we just love it. We love to go. We love to sing. It's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other um, thing that 
well, you and Aiden, I guess, like to do. Jennings and I don't really tend to like Space Mountain, but um, <laughs> come on, uh, you guys, you and Aiden always do Space Mountain. This, uh, the picture that we are getting ready to show here, is Jennings' first time <laughs> and only time to ever ride Space Mountain, and he looks quite terrified and came off of that ride crying his eyes out. Bless yeah, his little yeah. heart. All right, so best fast pass choices I would say are Seven Dwarfs, Pirates, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain, Peter Pan, and Haunted Mansion. At least in our personal opinion. Yes. All right, so one tip on fast passes. When you're booking them, if you're staying on site 60 days out, if you're staying off site 30 days out, it is easier to get hard to get fast passes. Say that five times fast. <laughs> it's easier to get the harder to get fast passes if you book them further out in your trip. Because um, let's say you're staying for seven days, you can book that seventh day, um, which is actually technically 67 days out from the day that you start booking. Um, and that's going to be. Um, uh, not on as many people's trips yet because it's 67 days into the future. It's not just 60 days in the future. So if you're booking day one in your trip and you can't get that Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, try looking at the end of your trip. It, it might just be there. Absolutely. Great tip. All right. So let's move into entertainment. Entertainment. Yes. So I'm going to move through these kind of quickly, um, but there are, if you're not into attractions, if you're not into rides, there's plenty to do. Uh, yes, <laughs> there's there is, always plenty to do. There is plenty of entertainment um, activities. So different shows include um, the Let the Magic Begin, which is the rope drop show. Mm -hmm. And again, that's right at the stage, right in front of Cinderella Castle. Mm -hmm. Also on the same stage is Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, our favorite... Happily Ever After. Uh, yes, and same thing. It is a projection, not same thing, but it's a projection show on the front of the castle and then fireworks all around the castle and behind it. And it is just absolutely spectacular. Must do. Don't miss this. You have got to see, if you see one nighttime show, push your kids through, <laughs> go back and take a nap, whatever you got to do to make it to Happily Ever After. So there is a, oh, we're going to talk about that in a second. There's a dessert party for Happily Ever After that takes place in the Tomorrowland Terrace, and then you can get Garden View, and they reserve a, a special seating area for you so you can see the show, which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, and I'm, we did that last time that we went, and um, I'm a little bit spoiled. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I may never be able to watch it the same again. Uh, there's also a Country Bear Jamboree and an Enchanted Tiki Room show. Um, the Enchanted Tiki Room is over in Adventureland, mm -hmm. and Country Bear Jamboree is in Frontierland. And then parades are include the Move It, Shake It, Dance, and Play It. Uh, that's a really fun parade where you get to... Um, it takes, mostly takes part right in front of that castle area. Uh, they make their way down Main Street to start and end the parade, but... Um, they stop in front of the castle area and then around that hub. And, and so it's a lot of fun. It's a big dance party. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade. This is the 3 p.m. Um, parade. Mm -hmm. And it is also very excellent. It starts back in the um, right in between Adventureland and Frontierland area. It's like right next to Splash Mountain that it comes out. And it makes its way around and through Liberty Square. And then um, it goes into the Central Hub area and up Main Street. So then um, other... that Sorry, that parade ends um, right there at Town Square. Yes, right there at Town Square. And a really excellent um, tip of where to watch that is um, at the train station. And then you can actually hop on the train and go to the back of the park, like dump you off into Frontierland or Fantasyland and uh, you can maybe hit up some rides while other people are trying to walk their way back there. That is an excellent tip. All right. So now we're going to talk about character meet and greet. Okay. And Magic Kingdom definitely by far has the most character meet and greet options throughout the park. We're going to move through these fairly quickly. In Town Square Theater, you can meet Mickey Mouse and you can also meet Tinkerbell. Uh, you can also um, do Disney and Friends in the ta uh, town square, and that's when we met the Talking Mickey, which Talking Mickey is no longer. Poor Talking Mickey. But um, you can still meet Mickey in the can same area. can still meet area. Mickey. This was Mickey's birthday, which is actually really cool that we got to meet him 
on yes. his birthday. Yeah, so, so birthday we got to year. we got to sing happy birthday to him. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So then in Adventureland, you can meet Aladdin. Mm -hmm. um, and then what a really cool character experience is Captain Jack Sparrow's pirate tutorial. Oh, my goodness. So this takes place right across from Pirates of the Caribbean in mm -hmm. Adventureland. And Captain Jack comes out and they get volunteers from the audience to learn how to fight. And so they get these little swords and most of the other kids fought Smee with Captain Jack's um, advisement. <laughs> and, uh, but Aiden was chosen to actually fight Captain Jack. So over in Fantasyland, you can actually meet Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. You can meet Rapunzel and Tiana. Also Cinderella and Elena in the Princess Fairy Tale Hall. Uh, Tigger and friends on by near the Winnie the Pooh ride. Mm -hmm. Gaston over by Gaston's Tavern, which I've always been dying to meet him, but he always has a really long line. <laughs> um, and then Ariel over in her grotto. Um, over by Pete's Silly Sideshow, you can meet Disney Pals, so it's just kind of assorted characters. And by the Mad Tea Party, you can meet Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. Merida is in the fairy tale garden. And that is kind of just down from that tea party, right? Yes. And then um, Incredibles characters are in Tomorrowland. And this is in 2018 for sure. There's uh, several of them, including Edna Mode. Um, but the incredible summer. Yes. So we don't know how long they will actually stick around for. Um, and then Buzz Lightyear is in Tomorrowland as well. So the next thing we are going to talk about is is the shop. Now there are a lot of shops to be shopped at at Magic Kingdom. <laughs> we have 39. My goodness. Total All shops. Right. So we're really going to kind of just cover our favorites. Okay. Um one of the must do's that we always have to shop at or right whenever you enter Magic Kingdom on the left hand side is the Emporium and on the right hand side is the Confectionery. So the Confectionery on the right hand side is an awesome little uh, sweet shop. They have, uh, not homemade, but custom made sweets in a little glass case, it's great. Mm -hmm. And then the Emporium is the entire city block. Like this is all the Emporium here. Um, it is a great shop, and again, um, if you come in, go into the Emporium, go inside at the first corner, and then you can travel through all of these shops and then pop out on the other side. You can skip all of that Main Street chaos. Another favorite of ours is Ye Old Christmas Shop. And Ye Old Christmas Shop is going to be right there across from Sleepy Hollow. Mm -hmm. And it has all types of Christmas ornaments. There's always somebody there that will personalize your Christmas ornament um, if you should want that. Uh, they also have some really awesome Christmas nutcrackers that are Disney themed. Um, another one is the Shop for Haunted Mansion. So Haunted Mansion don't, doesn't actually dump you out in this shop. like Which um, is real strange because most attractions do. <laughs> yeah, most attractions you get dumped out into a shop. But the Haunted Mansion shop is actually right out in front of Haunted Mansion. And mm -hmm. it's got all, it's called Memento Mori. And it's got all kinds of Haunted Mansion memorabilia. Uh, there's some shirts and hats and purses. And uh, there's actually even an option that you can go and take, have your picture taken. Um, and your picture transitions into like um, a scary dead picture of you. <laughs> Another one that we really love is over in Fantasyland and it's called Big Top Souvenirs. Mm -hmm. So this one is uh, kind of right out in front of Dumbo. It's a big circle and there is tons of stuff in there as well. Um, in a, many of these shops you're going to find a lot of the same memorabilia, the same souvenirs. So you, if it's general, I would say you probably are lucky and to find it somewhere else, even maybe down at Disney Springs. If it's something specific to a ride and you want it, you probably should get it there. All right, so then Merchant of Venus is finally our last one. This one has a lot of um, Star Wars stuff, or at least it did the last time we were in there. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to find uh, Star Wars and superhero stuff in there, and so the boys always enjoy going in that one. Um, now we're going to kind of hit the everything else that you could ever want to know about Magic Kingdom. 
all in about 30 seconds go. Yeah. So it really probably isn't everything else that you're ever going to want to know, but we're going to hit some highlights. Um, One of the really cool things that a lot of people don't know about is on Main Street right there in Town Square area, there is Harmony Barbershop. And you can actually go and get your hair cut here. Um, Right here. And we did this for Jennings first haircut and it was fantastic so not only do you get a little clip of their hair in a little baggie with um, fairy dust sparkles Mm -hmm. but you also get a set of ears for them that says my first haircut on the back and it's just about the sweetest memory you could possibly make at Disney World I think it is pretty cool Um, Over in Adventureland, there is the Pirates League, and this is the pirate version of Pippity Boppity Boutique, I would say. (laughs) You go in and you get to, um, you get your pirate name, you get to be done up like a pirate, and you will say the pirate vow at the end, and then you walk around looking like a pirate for the whole rest of the day. Now, in the castle, there is one of the two locations for Bippity Boppity Boutique. The other location is in Disney Springs, so there is the possibility of doing Bippity Boppity Boutique uh, without having to be in Magic Kingdom. But this is where um, our little princesses and princes can go in and get done up as either a princess or a prince and they kind of get the special treatment from a fairy godmother all right so then special tours uh there's always really cool behind the scenes um special tours that you can do uh probably one of the coolest that i would love to do at some point in my life but probably won't ever be able to is a private vip tour where you can um basically have a VIP tour guide to take you to the front of every line and um, get you all of the perks and probably give you a little hidden magic all along the way. So um, this is not cheap. It's uh, it's an expensive event, but it um, I think it would definitely be worth it if you can swing the price of it. Keys to the Kingdom Tour is the behind the scenes tour that we've done. This was really cool. So you meet here um, right outside of Tony's Town Square. You check in there um, and then you it's a four hour guided tour. It and was five. Five hours. Was it five? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We walked down Main Street on the second floor of the park. We walked down Main Street. We went through Adventureland. Pit stop at Jungle Cruise, then we rode Jungle Cruise, got our own private VIP little uh, tour there. Yeah. Then we went over here, we ate at Pecos Bills, then we went back, oh, we went backstage first, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. Uh, but we went backstage and saw all of the show buildings. So um, when I flip over to Google Maps and you see all this backstage stuff over here, we actually toured all of that right so this is an actual path back Uh there you can see that on and so we went through this little gate here that they keep closed and so this is where the parade comes out of uh, for the uh, festival fantasy parade Yep. Um, but we got to go back here this is so this discolored concrete that's where they test their concrete colors that's what that is Um, this is parade float storage this is where the festival of the fantasy floats are kept Uh, this is all the splash mountain the inside stuff Um, they explained how this little rock formation they had to put on the building because you could see like the corner of this building from inside the park so the whole point is from inside the park you don't want to be able to see any of this backstage stuff then we went uh, back out of there we ate at Pecos Bill then we walked all the way back through um, Liberty Square into uh, what you may call it um, Haunted Mansion well we went to Haunted Mansion we, we rode went, Haunted yeah, Mansion went in the back door of Haunted Mansion rode Haunted Mansion mm-hmm. And then we went um, backstage again um, into the Utilidor. So we went in. Which was so cool. It was so cool. We went in right there and um, we walked underground. We saw costuming. We saw... um, What else did we see? Uh, Well, we... I mean, we saw the the path where the bus comes in and drops uh, the cast members off and... um, we saw lots of really cool pictures of Walt and Roy and um, kind of talked a lot about the history of the start of Magic Kingdom. We went under the castle. We mm-hmm. went underneath Main Street. Oh, we actually got to see uh, 
uh, Jasmine getting ready to come out for the castle show. Mm -hmm. So she was up on the stairs getting ready to go into the castle. Yep. And then we, we popped out um, somewhere in here is yeah. where we came up. Um, so the Marceline to Magic Kingdom tour um, is similar but different. Um, and I believe both of those have an age restriction. So make sure that you look at that if you have kids with you. We, um, we did not have our kids with us on this trip that we did that tour on. And then Magic Behind Our Steam Trains is another special tour at Magic Kingdom. Um, so Magic Kingdom, the last thing that we want to talk about is that they do offer special parties. So probably two of the most popular ones that you hear about are Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, uh, which is during the fall season. It has extended. Uh, the first party is actually in August this year, and they run th uh, through October 31st. And then it is a, a hard ticket event. So if you are going to either Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party, which basically picks up where the Halloween party stops and goes through the holiday season, either one of those, you have to pay an extra ticket price in order to enter. You can enter the park as early as 4 p.m. with this ticket. Um, but the party doesn't actually start until um, this year. They're starting them at 6 p.m. And then they usually run until midnight or so. Um, but they are limited to a certain number of people. So the park is not quite as crowded. And then there's usually um, always special events that happen during these party times that don't happen at other times. And you get special treats along the way. So I'm dying. We've been to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party a couple times now. Yes. We really, really enjoy it. It's fun. Um, I would love to go to Mickey's Not So Scary. There's actually trick-or-treat stations. Um, one thing to note if you go to Not So Scary is that attractions, some of them will be closed down as trick-or-treat stations. And so if you're going for like a certain attraction, like... Uh, I've heard somebody say like the Enchanted Tiki Room was shut down and they were really excited to actually do the Enchanted Tiki Room, but it was a trick-or-treat station. So you might just keep that in mind. Um, if it's the Halloween party, you may not want it to be your only time to be in Magic Kingdom. Right. And then... Disney's After Hours is another option that's been happening that's also another hard ticket event. Um, so you have to pay an extra price and then you get to be in the park after hours. Uh, so with a limited number of people. And then finally, Happily Ever After dessert party, firework parties is another option to do. And this actually happens during the, um, when with general admission. So this is something that you can you have to pay an added fee to be able to do it, but you get it if you just have a regular ticket into the park. And you will go and go into the Tomorrowland Terrace mm -hmm. area, and you have all you can eat um, desserts. They also had fruit out and some cheese, and um, and then a sparkling cider and other non-alcoholic beverages. So there was hot chocolate and coffee and juices and water and all kinds of different things. Um, and then after you are done eating, you will do one of two things. If you have chosen to do the Plaza Garden viewing, which is the one we did, they will take you to a special marked off garden area where you can sit and watch the fireworks show. This was the- Really good view. I mean, yeah. This was the first time that we've ever watched that show that we sat down. We literally sat down. In the grass. And we're, we were able to see everything we wanted to see. It yeah. was spectacular. It was awesome. And then the other option is to do the actual um, uh, terrace area. And if you want to have a chair to sit in, this is where to go. Um, however, I have heard that the Plaza Garden viewing is better views. All right, so thanks so much for listening to our uh, very, very first planning session, How to Plan Disney Magic Kingdom Edition. Sorry for it being a little long. I think future episodes will probably go by a little quicker. Yeah, but I think it was a lot of inf great information and a lot of fun. So until next time. You've been listening to Addicted to the Mouse. <laughs>